why do we go through hard times why do we go through sufferings is suffering because god is not pleased with us what is the true purpose behind the sufferings that we face and especially at times like this as the world is going through this pandemic and suffering at large what is the counsel the church can give to the people who are suffering well i want to bring to you a message entitled the purpose of suffering from the book of job i'm basing this message from the speech of elihu from chapter 32 to 37 of job if you see the context of this passage in job chapter 1 Job lost his 10 children his servants and his wealth in Job chapter 2 a skin disease and boil came upon Job's body and Job is out there in the ash pile his three friends have come and they are mourning at the situation of Job when you come to Job chapter 3 Job cursed the day of his birth and the three friends Eliphaz Bildad and Zophar who were quiet for 7 days without talking a word suddenly starts conversing with job and they starts giving their perspective on job's suffering they had argued the retribution principle of god that suffering is basically a punishment for sin and prosperity is a reward for righteousness is a partial truth the friend said job you are suffering because of your sin your children have died because of their sin and it is a punishment for grievous sin how do you feel when you go through suffering and your friends come and accuse you of wrong doing job all the while rejected the accusation of his friends and he said i am righteous i did not do anything wrong to receive the suffering that i am going through and job won the argument with his friends and by the time you come to the end of their conversation they have nothing more to say job has won over the argument that he is righteous job won the argument but the question of why the righteous suffer remained unanswered we are left at the end of chapter 31 with a confused state that righteous go through suffering the wicked goes through suffering but why the righteous suffer job does not have an answer and god rules the affairs of man job never doubts that but as to why the righteous suffer job does not have any answer it would be possible to live the rest of our lives with such an understanding we could simply say that yes i believe in the lord jesus christ i know that all things happen for my good but in this world the righteous go through suffering and uh, in the coming world in eternity everything will be right and everything will be made perfect but in this world when we go through suffering we do not know why this is not a bad way to live most of the christians live in such a way this honors god but the writer of the book of job is not satisfied with such an understanding of suffering the writer goes beyond this understanding and this writer in the book of job wants us to understand that god has not concealed all of his ways there is more to see of god's purpose in suffering than we may think and when you go through uncertainties of life when you go through suffering and distress and pain in your life wouldn't it be good that if you had a friend who came who sat near you and give you the right understanding godly perspective of suffering that's what this new friend does in the life of job and we find elihu come into the scene giving a godly perspective on suffering come with me to job chapter 32 verse 1 to 5 so these three men stopped answering job because he was righteous in their own eyes but elihu son of barakal the buzite of the family of ram became very angry with job for justifying himself rather than god he was also angry with the three friends because they had found no way to refute job and yet had condemned him now elihu had waited before speaking to job because they were older than he when he saw that the three men had nothing more to say his anger was aroused elihu speaks all the way from chapter 32 to chapter 37 of job and he comes and gives job a different perspective a godly perspective on sufferings 
First of all, Elihu rebukes Job. Elihu says that Job was over ambitious or over righteous in his statements with his friends. And Elihu said that Job was indeed proud and arrogant in his attitude. You see that in chapter 33 was 17, chapter 35 was 12, and chapter 36 was 9. And in Job chapter 33 was 8 to 12, Elihu puts his finger right on the mistakes of Job. Let us read Job chapter 33 was 8 to 12. But you have said in my hearing, I heard the very words. Elihu is telling, I have heard you Job say, verse 9, I am pure, I have done no wrong. I am clean and free from sin, yet God has found fault with me. He considers me his enemy. He fastens my feet in shackles. He keeps close watch on all my paths. But I tell you in this, you are not right, for God is greater than any mortal. Job's three friends said, Job is suffering because of his sin. Elihu comes and says, in his suffering, Job sinned. You know, Job was justifying himself in his suffering rather than justifying God who is sovereign in his sufferings. And do you know that Job put himself in the place of God when he said that I have no sin and I'm righteous? And who can claim that? Jesus Christ claimed that. In John chapter 8 verse 46, Jesus said, Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Jesus said, I am sinless. I am righteous. I am the perfect lamb of God. And here Job in his suffering, he's sinning by telling that I am righteous and I am sinless. Even though Job was a perfect man in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, Job was not in that sinless perfect state. He still was in his flesh and there is residue of sin still in him. There was a sediment of pride that began to cloud the purity of his life when it was stirred up by suffering. Can you imagine a glass of water with a sediment of mud inside and the mud has settled down and all of a sudden you shake that glass, the sediment of mud starts clouding that water and the glass. And likewise, there was a sediment of pride that began to cloud the purity of Job's life when it was stirred up by suffering. Now, Elihu, after talking to Job about his sin, Elihu is now giving us the explanation of suffering. Elihu's understanding of why the righteous suffer has to do with the residue of sin or pride in that person. Job had pride, self-reliance, self-righteousness lying at the bottom of his life. His life was clean until it was shaken by suffering. Then the sediment began to be stirred up and it came out in words that were overly self-justifying and overly disrespectful to his maker. According to Elihu, God speaks to man in two kinds of ways. Okay, this was much before scripture was given in the Old Testament, much before the Israelites received the scripture. And Elihu comes and says, God speaks to man in two different ways. First of all, God speaks by his word in visions. And secondly, God speaks by the pain of suffering. Come with me to Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 19. For God does speak now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings. Why? To turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride, to preserve them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. Or someone may be chastened on a bed of pain with constant distress in their bones. Now you see the two ways that God speaks to man. God spoke to man through dreams and visions and whisper in their ear the wisdom. And secondly, God spoke to man in their pain and suffering. Well, these are definitely the ways God can even speak now through dreams and visions and through suffering and pain. But in the New Testament, we have light of other ways God speaks to us. You know, God speaks through dreams and visions and pain. But also, the New Testament shows us other ways where God speaks to us. 
how does god speak to us today god speaks primarily through his son jesus christ according to hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 secondly god speaks through his word the scripture second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 thirdly god speaks through his spirit his blessed holy spirit in philippians chapter 2 verse 12 to 13 and john chapter 14 verse 26 fourthly god speaks through his people in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 when you come to church and when somebody prophesies when somebody comes and talks to you and encourages you from the word of god you hear god speaking to you through your friends christian friends whom god is using fifthly god speaks through his creation in psalm chapter 19 verse 1 to 2 and romans chapter 1 verse 20 creations declare the glory of god and it brings forth speech and finally god speaks to us through prayer in romans chapter 8 verse 26 and 27 when we pray god speaks to us in prayer now coming back to the perspective of elihu elihu says that god speaks to us through visions and secondly he's putting himself in the position of job in the situation of job and elihu says that god speaks to us in the bed of suffering and then Elihu brings in a perspective that even the righteous suffer. Even a person who is right with God, covered the sins in the blood of Jesus Christ. Even in the New Testament, people go through suffering. And even in the Old Testament, even the righteous go through suffering according to Elihu's words. Elihu makes it clear that there is such a person like a righteous person who still has the need of his sin to be revealed and rooted out. Job is a righteous sinner. To call a person righteous does not mean that the person is sinless perfection. Job had been claiming to his friends that he is righteous. Elihu is enlightening him and telling that there is still residue of sin. And you are going through suffering so that God will reveal that sin to you. And you can repent of that sin. Come with me to Job chapter 36 verse 6 to 10. He does not keep the wicked alive but gives the afflicted their rights. He does not take his eye of the righteous. He enthrones them with kings and exalts them forever. But if the righteous people are bound in chains, he's telling if the righteous suffer, held fast by cords of affliction, he tells them what they have done, that they have sinned arrogantly. He makes them listen to correction and commands them to repent of their evil. Oh, what a beautiful principle Elihu is bringing regarding sufferings. You know, Job's three friends were talking the retribution principle. That you do good, you will prosper. You do sin, you will have punishment from God or suffering from God. That is true in one aspect. But look at the richness of understanding Elihu brings in his speech. Both the righteous and the wicked suffer, he says. Secondly, he says the wicked is destroyed in suffering in chapter 36 verse 6. And thirdly, Elihu says righteous is exalted in their suffering. When the righteous go through suffering in chapter 36 verse 7 of Job, righteous is exalted in their suffering. In other words, Elihu is telling that the righteous are far from sinless perfection. There is much of the old nature left in the most righteous man or woman. And when the righteous goes through suffering, the nature, the old sinful nature is stirred up. And that's why Job is suffering. My dear brother, my dear sister, you may be a child of God and you may have questions why you are going through certain sufferings in your life. You would have been a good believer. You would have been a prayerful, meditating on the word of God, studying the word of God, giving, sharing the gospel kind of believer. And now you are going through some setbacks in your job. You are going through some setbacks in your relationships. I want to tell you that even the righteous will go through suffering, but in our suffering, we will not be destroyed God will reveal to us our sins and our shortcomings and it is a purifying process in our lives where we are cleansed from our sins that are settled deep within that which are unaware to us and that's exactly what happened in the life of Job the purpose of suffering of the righteous according to Elihu is 
Elihu says that God speaks to us in visions and dreams and also through the bed of pain, through sufferings. And the purpose is this, in Job chapter 33, verse 17 to 18, to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride, to preserve them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. So why does the righteous suffer? Elihu does not picture God as an angry judge, but as a redeemer, as a savior, as a rescuer, as a doctor. The pain that God caused Job is like the surgeon's knife, not an executioner's whip. And today, if you are going through suffering, it is for your good. God is doing something in the pain that we are experiencing in our lives. Suffering keeps one from wrongdoing. Secondly, suffering keeps one from pride. Thirdly, according to Elihu, suffering preserves one from danger. And fourthly, suffering keeps one from destruction. In other words, God's purpose when the righteous suffer is not to punish the righteous, but to save you. Today, if you are going through suffering, this is not the punishment of God for the righteous, but it is the saving hand of God to save Job from his pride, to save Job from going into deeper sins. And it was to bring Job back from the pit of destruction and ultimately from death. Amen. Elihu brings in a great understanding why the righteous go through suffering. We have been bombarded by the wrong teachings that you come to Christ and everything will be okay. But here the Bible makes it very clear. The balanced teaching of the Bible is that both the wicked and the righteous go through sufferings. But when the righteous go through suffering, it is not to punish us, but it is to save us and to make us mature and to root in our faith and strengthen our faith more in the Lord Jesus Christ. And moving forward, Elihu continues to give wisdom and the purpose behind our sufferings. Point number five, suffering makes the righteous aware of their sinfulness. Job chapter 36 was eight to nine. But if the righteous people are bound in chain, in other words, when righteous people go through suffering, held fast by the cords of affliction, he tells them what they have done, that they have sinned arrogantly. Elihu's teaching is that affliction makes the righteous person aware of the remaining sinfulness in them and it helps them hate it and renounce sin in our lives. And the sixth reason Elihu says is suffering makes the righteous listen to correction. Job chapter 36 verse 10. He makes them listen to correction and commands them to repent of their evil. Elihu says suffering makes us listen to correction. Isn't it correct my dear brother and sister? Suffering opens our ears to understanding and correction from the word of God. This is what the psalmist said in Psalm 119 verse 71. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. The psalmist says, when I got sick, I learned. I heard from God when I got sick. Elihu says that the suffering of the righteous is not the fire of destruction, but the fire that refines gold of their goodness. Because suffering of the righteous is not punitive, it is curative and rehabilitative. I repeat it again. The suffering of the righteous is not the fire of destruction, but the fire that refines the gold of their goodness. Because suffering of the righteous is not punitive, it is curative and rehabilitative God has great plans in the sufferings if at all we go through suffering in our lives what wisdom is Elihu giving us both the wicked and the righteous suffer and what is the result of the wicked people who suffer in this world everybody has their share of suffering every man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upwards the book of Job says again so when the wicked suffer, something happens. When the righteous suffer, something else happens. See what happens when the wicked suffer. Job chapter 36 verse 13 to 14. The godless in heart harbor resentment. Even when he fetters them, they do not cry for help. They die in their youth among male prostitutes of the shrines. 
when the godless go through suffering they experience destruction and they are never rescued but what happens when the godly man or a woman goes through suffering job chapter 36 verse 15 to 16 but those who suffer this is a righteous sufferer he delivers in their suffering he speaks to them in their affliction he is wooing you from the jaws of destruction to a spacious place free from restriction to the comfort of your table laden with choice food so what happens when the righteous suffer god delivers the righteous god opens their ears god speaks to us in our suffering and we experience deliverance their purpose from god is not destruction but correction and deliverance in the sight of god amen so what a beautiful understanding elihu brings in the prolonged suffering of job job's suffering prolonged and he cursed god and his friends started giving the retribution principle that you are suffering because of your sin but elihu comes to the picture and he gives a godly perspective and to a great extent it's a godly perspective because after elihu speaks god speaks and i will tell you later why this can be considered as a godly perspective on sufferings so how has elihu added to our understanding of sufferings elihu first of all tells that job's three friends are wrong in their interpretation of job's sufferings job's three friends had told job you are suffering because of your sin god punishes the wicked and prospers the righteous but that was not true in job's case sufferings are also a portion for the righteous both the wicked and the righteous go through suffering and suffering awakens the ear of the righteous to new dimensions of god's reality and new depths of their own imperfection and need suffering deepens the faith of the righteous and the godliness of the righteous suffering opens the eyes of the righteous to the great truths of god so job's three friends are wrong by bringing in the retribution principle secondly Elihu also tells us why Job is wrong. Job was insisting that he was righteous. Job was insisting that why being righteous he is going through the suffering and he has become the enemy of God. Elihu steps in that you are suffering not because you are the enemy of God, you are suffering because you are the righteous son of God and in your suffering God has a plan and a purpose to show you your imperfections show you that there are some sediments of pride and arrogance and self righteousness that is there in your job and that need to be repented and that needs to be cleansed by the power of God so Elihu tells that job is also wrong so he was angry at his friends and Elihu was also angry at job for his self righteousness so what is the result of Elihu's speech Job never argues with Elihu. Do you remember when Job's three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, when they were talking to Job, Job constantly talked back proving his innocence and his righteousness. But when Elihu is speaking to Job, and even when Elihu is giving chance for Job to speak, Job is silent. That means he is convicted of his sin and he is brought some sense by Elihu's speech and understanding of suffering come to job chapter 33 verse 32 if you have anything to say elihu said answer me speak up for i want to vindicate you there is no answer from job job is absolutely silent and job agreed with elihu job had been successful in silencing his three friends but to respond to elihu job has nothing to say and finally Job did repent after Elihu's speech in Job chapter 42 verse 6 therefore i despise myself and repent in dust and ashes elihu was right in what he had said about job and job repents and job understands how wrong he was how self righteous he was how he had taken the position of god and claimed that there was no harm in him no evil in him that he had become righteous and now he sees the arrogance and pride and job repents and something to be noted about elihu's speech is that god does not rebuke elihu god when he comes to speak 
okay he rebukes three friends of job but god does not rebuke elihu job chapter 42 and is verse 7 after the lord had said these things to job he said to eliphaz the temanite i am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant job has why does god not rebuke elihu because he has been speaking the right perspective about the trials and sufferings of job and if you really see the speech of elihu it is followed by the speech of god it is like elihu is a forerunner before god could speak just like john the baptist was the forerunner before jesus could come here elihu gives us a new perspective and i understand that elihu's speech was guided by god in chapter 32 and verse 8 but it is the spirit in a person the breath of the almighty that gives some understanding here we can find elihu speaks from the understanding that god had given him my dear brother and sister the world is going through a very difficult time people are losing jobs there are so many people with infection of covid-19 the death rates are getting high by the day and india is very much affected with covid-19 what do we understand regarding sufferings and there are people jobless homeless there is so much of violence that is happening in this world so what is the central lesson of elihu's speech the central lesson for us from the book of job is that the children of god those who trust in god and are led by the holy spirit those who have their sins covered by the blood of jesus may indeed go through suffering so when they do suffer it is not a punishment for sin christ has borne the punishment of our sin and there is no double jeopardy there is no punishment for the children of god there is only merciful gentle and if necessary severe discipline for a child of god the suffering for the children of god is not the firm application of a principle of retributive justice it is not because of what we have done or anything like that but the suffering is the free application of the principle of sovereign grace god is gracious god is merciful god wants us to be perfect god wants us to be holy god wants us to know our own sins and sometimes god leads us through the discipline of suffering in our lives the suffering that is apportioned to us is individually designed for everybody god is cautiously leading us in the time of our pain and suffering it is an expert therapy by the loving hand of our great physician the lord that we serve the aim of suffering is that our faith might be refined our holiness might be enlarged our souls might be saved and god might be glorified in our lives amen my dear brother and sister when you are a child of god we will have our own shares of joy and we will have our own shares of sufferings i pray that god lead us in both these situations of our life i have seen my own shares of joy in my life i have seen my own shares of sufferings in my life okay when you are joyful don't deny god in your pleasure but when you go through suffering let us be more closer to god and let us increase our faith in god and our trust in god and god will lead us through these times of sufferings i want to bring out certain passages to you from the old testament and new testament and i want to tell you the whole counsel on suffering based on the word of god what the word of god teaches us okay come with me to lamentations chapter 3 verse 37 to 42 who can speak and have it happen if the lord has not decreed it is it not from the mouth of the most holy that both calamities and good things come why should the living complain when punished for their sins let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the lord let us lift up our hearts and our hands to god in heaven and say we have sinned and rebelled and you have not forgiven first peter chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 in all this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief 
in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10 to 11 God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired for life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. And finally, James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lack anything. Praise the Lord. What a perspective on sufferings. Job went through sufferings and sufferings revealed his inner sins. And when we go through sufferings, we need to introspect if there any settled sin that God is reminding us. Let it be a time where our faith increases, our knowledge of the word of God increases and our intimacy with God increases. I want to give you some takeaway points before I pray for you. Here are some takeaway points from today's message. Both the righteous and wicked go through suffering. Secondly, the suffering of the wicked leads to destruction. But the suffering of the righteous is not to punish, but to save. Fourthly, God speaks to us in our suffering. And finally, God delivers the righteous. So if you're going through suffering right now, there is hope. My God will deliver us. He will deliver us from all our trouble. I can cling on to God and see the redemption and the re deliverance of my God in my life. Can I hear an amen, church? If you're going through suffering, the day of your deliverance is coming. He will lift us up out of the miry clay. And put a song on our mouth. And it will turn to be a great testimony. Amen. Hold on to the promises of God. And endure sufferings joyfully. Shall we just look to the Lord in prayer. As we finish today's message. Can you just commit your situation into the hands of God. You, maybe you are going through pain. Maybe you are going through suffering. Can you just tell God. God I just want to surrender it completely. No questions whatsoever. Take control. And I know that my Redeemer lives and you will deliver me from the situation I am in.